say good day to you this day of your time. How are you all? Once again, we will take this opportunity, first of all, to thank each and every one of you for allowing this transmission to occur through this particular window and in this particular method at this time. Once again, each and every time, your civilization allows our civilization to communicate with you in this manner. It affords us an opportunity to experience through each and every one of you another aspect, another facet of the infinite, and this expands our understanding of all the different ways that creation can present itself. And so we thank you for this gift of sharing. We would like to begin this transmission with the following brief ideas to lay a little bit of what you call a foundation or a groundwork for the primary principles that will generally be contained in almost every subject that we will discuss this day of your time. So, many of you have heard us talk about certain tools, certain states of being, certain states of mind that will allow you to understand who and what you are as a person, as a being, as a personality, a little bit more clearly. For it is in understanding the structure and the nature of yourself as a person and as a being that will allow you to make changes, make shifts, in your reality, in the manner that you desire, in the manner that you prefer, more effortlessly, with the idea of less pain, more joy. These ideas now are paramount for what you call this age of transition, this age of awareness on your planet, as you have named it, as you have deemed it. And thus we are very happy to help, to assist in presenting concepts, tools that are handy, that you can use very easily, so that when applying them, you can see the results in yourselves and in your physical reality relatively quickly. The idea, first and foremost, of course, always begins with self-valuation. We understand from our experience with many of you that one of the most difficult things that many of you now have to do on your planet is learn to value yourselves. Because for thousands upon thousands of your years, you have been taught, because you have forgotten your connection to the infinite, you have been taught to think of yourselves as less than worthy, as undeserving, as possessing little or no value, and without an understanding of your worth, without an understanding of your value, no tool we would share with you will really be effective. Only when you begin to learn and behave and hold true that you are a worthwhile aspect of the infinite, that you are a beautiful, unconditionally loved and supported aspect of creation, and hold yourself in the same value that the creation holds you in, only really then will the tools be effective in the strongest way possible. This only makes sense. For the tools will only be as strong and as powerful as the energy you give them because the energy comes from you, through you. Therefore, you are the ones that determine the efficacy of the tools. They do not really have the ability to work often by themselves because they draw their energy from you. They draw their realization capability from you. So let us briefly lay down a little bit as an outline of these ideas so that we will understand when questions come what we are all talking about and we'll have something to refer back to as a base point, a baseline. First and foremost, as we have said, self-valuation. From there comes the understanding of what it means to be a personality structure. Personality structure, very briefly, in recap for some of you, in newness for others, is based on three things, three principles. Your personality is an artificial construct. Doesn't mean it isn't natural, but it is a type of mask that is built or created or fabricated from three ideas. Belief systems, emotions, and behavior. You can understand the analogy of belief systems as being like blueprints of a building. Emotions are the builders, the activation principles and energies that the building built. The behavior is the building materials the thoughts and actions that you do. So, you can instantly understand that 
the nature of the blueprint, the clarity of the design, will determine the ultimate product, and the nature of the builders will determine the quality of the product, and the nature of the building materials will determine the quality of the final building. When those three things are in alignment, you can understand that your reality will reflect the idea of a strong structure, a strong reality that is stable in that way. But if either your belief blueprint, your emotional builder, or your behavior building materials are somehow lacking or out of balance in the idea of self-worth and self-valuation and are not aligned with the other sides of the three-sided prism, then of course it would be obvious that your building would be, as you would say in your language, a little bit wonky. So, this whole idea is to help clarify what those three components really are all about and how to maintain them and bring them back into balance. Now, also, it takes an understanding that physical reality is really just a mirror and it can only reflect what you put out. There are really only four laws in creation that allow you to experience everything that you experience. Law number one is that you exist. Can't do much about that. Now, when we talk, first of all, about laws, we're not talking about the type of laws that you have on your planet that are, in that sense, arbitrary rules and regulations that can be broken or changed or rewritten or ignored. But the idea is even beyond what many of you call laws of physics, because even some of these are only germane to your particular universal reality. And in other dimensions, many of the so-called laws that you have labeled do not really apply. We are talking about real laws, because real laws cannot be broken. Cannot be broken. It is impossible. And it is these four laws that give structure to all of creation. So, as we have said, law number one, you exist. And what that actually means, when taken out to its ultimate logical understanding, is that if you exist now, you always will. And you always have. Therefore, you may change form, but you will always exist in some way, shape, or form. Because isness is the only quality that existence has. It does not know how to become non-existence. Non-existence is already full of all the things that will never exist, and there is no room in non-existence for that which does exist. That which exists only has one quality, to be. And thus, that is the only thing it will always be. So if you do exist, you always will. So relax. Law number two, the one is the all, and the all are the one. And this simply means that all of the pieces together form the one. And the one is the one, but knows itself simultaneously as all the pieces. What this means is that creation is not separate from the creator, but is made of the creator, and that there is no outside to it. Everything that is every discrete person, place, Thing, every discrete concept, every discrete part is a part of one same whole and also holographically every single part is the whole expressing itself as a part of the whole. So the second law, the one is all, the all are one. Law three, what you put out is what you get back. Very simple. The energy you give off based on your beliefs, your emotions, your behaviors, the vibrational frequency you give off is what determines the kind of reality experience you have. Because physical reality doesn't exist except as a reflection of what you strongly believe is true for you. That is all physical reality is. It is literally like a mirror. If you are looking in a mirror, and you see your face with a frown on it. You know that you don't go over to the mirror and try to force the reflection to smile. You know that if you want to see the reflection smile, you must smile first. There is no way to change the reflection without you smiling first. But you can also conversely understand that when you decide to smile, the reflection has no choice but to return the smile because it doesn't have a mind of its own. So the idea to understand is that physical reality very much is really like a mirror. It will not change until you do first. 
But if you do, it has no choice but to follow suit because it is only a reflection of what you have put out. Law number four. Change is the only constant and everything changes except the first three laws. <laughs> that is it. One, two, three, four. That's it. Every experience you have ever had, are having now, or will ever have, is based on a combination of these four laws to varying degrees. That's it. Now, the idea to understand, again, is that when you allow yourself to make choices, then your choices are based on your motivation. And your motivation is based on your definitions. This is the other way to explain the three-part process. Your behavior, your choices, are based on your motivations, your emotions, which stem from your definitions, which are your beliefs. So anytime you are making a choice, it is always because you have been motivated to make that choice. Motivation only has two parts to it. This is all there is to motivation. You will always, in every single case, you will always choose what you perceive to be the choice that is closest to pleasure and furthest from pain. That's it. That is your entire motivational force. But notice I said you will choose what you perceive to be closest to pleasure and furthest from pain. And that's where definitions come in. Because only as you define what you believe to be pleasurable or painful will you then be motivated to make choices in accordance to that belief. So many times you may choose things that on one level you could say seem to be detrimental or destructive to you. But if you keep choosing it, that simply means that you must have a definition in your belief system somewhere that says that regardless of how painful it is to keep choosing that, you are somehow defining it as being less painful than making any other choice. That's why it is so powerful to get in touch with what your belief systems are because when you find out why you may be defining something as pleasurable or painful and you change the definition, you will instantly change your motivation and you will instantly change the choices that you make because you're all motivated people. None of you lack motivation. None of you lack trust. It's just a matter of where you are placing your trust and what definition you are motivated to act upon. That's all there is to it. This is how you simplify the things in your life by understanding them from the base on up. From definition through motivation through choice. From belief through emotion through behavior. That's all there is to it, really. The final thing that we will be including in this toolkit is the idea that we have begun to talk about now recently that is above and beyond the idea of belief, and that is simple knowingness, which comes from the idea of surrender, letting go. Now, again, we understand that in many of the definitions many of you have on your planet regarding this word surrender, many of you will label this as a loss of some sort or a lack of control of some sort, and this is not the case. Surrender, if we may provide our definition, is the letting go of the concept of who you think you're supposed to be and actually being who you are. Because who you are is unlimited possibilities. And when you allow yourself to surrender to the idea and the experience that you were created in the image of the infinite, which means you are infinite possibilities too, then the physical reality, which is only a mirror, can then reflect those unlimited possibilities back to you in the synchronicities as they naturally unfold in your physical day-to-day -day life. So surrender is actually acceptance of your total self, not, in that sense, the forsaking of your total self, as many of you have been led to believe through the definitions that your world has provided you with that only serve to limit you. And this is what we want to share with you and what we suggest you learn to give up are those limitations. So that is really what we are going to be discussing in all of these interactions. <clears throat> Our variations of those principles, it will usually all come down to that idea. And of course, it will usually also come down to one other principle that is all wrapped up in this, 
And that has to do with being your natural true self, which in many cases is simply another way of saying, follow your joy, follow your excitement to the best of your ability, because the sensation that you call joy, the sensation that you call excitement, the sensation that you call unconditional love is the frequency of energy that represents your natural, true, core, original self. So when you are acting on circumstances and opportunities that bring with them the highest level of this joy, the highest level of excitement, you are saying you have the faith to take the steps to act upon your true self, and in so doing, your physical reality, the mirror, will support you because it has no choice but to do so. These are the principles that comprise the toolkit of manifestation and change, and that's really all there is to it. You will see as we discuss the ideas that you wish to share this day of your time that almost everything you have to share will come down in one way, shape, or form to these ideas if they has to do with the idea of your own personal growth and your own personal life and the expression of who and what you are. <clears throat> so, with all of that in mind... We once again thank each and every one of you for the opportunity to receive the gift of this sharing from you.